Shimataji, good morning, brothers and sisters. Let's bow down to Shimataji, raise our Mother Kundalini, and put bandhan. गणेश मंत्र Let us bring our attention on our left heart. Mataji, by your grace, I am a pure spirit. this ego and super ego i am just a pure spirit
right hand on your forehead. I forgive everyone and I forgive myself. And on our Sahasara, Jumataji, for giving us self realization and help us to establish our self-realization fully. Bless us with thoughtless awareness state. Back on the lap. The attention on Sahasara. Let's listen to Shimataji's speech. Today we are celebrating <coughs> the resurrection of. Christ. That is the greatest message of Christ's life, not the crucifixion. Anybody can be crucified and killed, but this dead body of Christ was resurrected from death. Death itself died and he overcome. <coughs> it's a miracle for ordinary human beings, definitely, but not for Christ. Because he was a divine person. He was Sri Ganesha. He was Ungana itself. So, he could walk on the water, gravity would not affect. And also he got resurrected because death could not affect him. <coughs> Such a great divine personality specially created for human beings that people should recognize him. But they did not recognize him. They killed him in a very brutal manner. And even now the thing cross is a great thing because Christ died on the cross. It's a very cruel idea of human beings to respect the cross. What does it show? It shows that people like all the cruelties done to him, symbolizing cross as the one that represented his death and his atrocities. 
the way he was tortured. <coughs> so it was a very sad time when he was crucified. But when he got resurrected, it was the most joyous, most auspicious and most beautiful time. The resurrection of Christ is very symbolic for surgeon. If Christ could be resurrected, then human beings also can be resurrected because he came as a human being with all powers and he created the path of resurrection for us. This path of resurrection is the one that we have followed in Sajuga. But the greatest thing is the piercing of the Agya Chakra which is described in all spirit, spiritual treaties or may be called as the scriptures, that that is the door which is golden, which is like a cover and no one can pass through that. So constricted is this door of Agachana. But Christ did cross that. His crossing has helped us today to open your system, open your Agya. Without opening the Agya, you cannot go to Sastra. And this was done so easily in your case, only because Christ could go through all that torture and all that brutality and crossed over. How much we should be indebted to him, I don't know, a words that can express. Because he is the one who took lead in telling people that you seek, you seek and you'll find. And then he says that you have to come and bang at the door. This is exactly what has happened in your case, that you have risen up to Agya and then you have crossed beyond Agya. This crossing of Agya was not at all difficult for you, though by your own ideas of thinking and of conditioning, of the futuristic planning and all that, it was a big, big crowd, I should say, of very black clouds were hovering on the thoughts were overpowering. And you could not have penetrated through this Agya which was all covered. But you did. And you never even felt that you have crossed the Agya Chakra so easily. First of all, we all should really be very thankful to Christ for opening the Agya for him. For him, all the tortures and all the brutality were nothing, because his purpose of life, his purpose of his advent, his incarnation was to break the Agya. Today you will find that even though your Agya is opened out and you have crossed through, still you will be amazed that people get involved in the Agya Chakra. In Sahaja Yoga people do get involved in Agya Chakra. Now how do we see through introspection what happens to us? For example, <coughs> once people come to Sajoga, they think they are in charge, in charge of this, in charge of that, in charge of all the Sajogis, and they start behaving in a manner which doesn't behave 
it's a done. I've seen them and I mean it. I'm amused the way they just start uh, trusting themselves and showing off that they are very much in charge. This is nothing modern. This is used to be there with human beings. But if it was so, it was before. Sahaja. Even now, people get into the mood of dominating others by saying that we are in charge. Sahaja Yoga is not so simple as it, because there are lots of temptations. Supposing you make somebody a leader, now a leader becomes sort of in charge and he gets the drunkenness of power. When he is like that, he starts dominating all the rest of the people and also starts showing off that he is something very great and he has to dominate all the rest of the people. Then he creates an atmosphere of fear. Firstly, I've seen what happens with them is that they start saying falsely that mother has told this, mother has said so, this is mother's ideas. I have nothing to do with that gentleman. But he goes on talking like that and people get very frightened. Then also he can also frighten you by saying, I will tell mother, mother will listen to me and she will punish you. I am sometimes very surprised at such people because I have never said that I will punish somebody or I will uh, take him out of Sahaja Yoga, nothing else. So this man who thinks no end of himself, he may be a leader, may not be a leader, maybe nothing in Sahaja Yoga. And then he starts talking like this in such a funny manner that it doesn't look that the person is a surgeon. Then he goes even further. He goes himself describing as something very great, as if he is the one who is chosen specially for the rising higher and higher. When I hear about these things, I am really amazed. How can people be fool themselves all the time and behave in such a manner? First thing in Sahaja Yoga is humility. If you are not a humble person, you cannot be a Sahaja The person who orders a lot, the person who talks in a manner as if he is Hitler, any person who tries to control and be in charge of the thing. All these capacities only show that that person has achieved nothing in such. First thing is to enjoy the humility. I have seen people like this, they will always sit in the first room, they will be always sitting in a place where you just see them all the time there. I just smile, I know they are just show-offs, they think no end of themselves and that's why they are there. But they themselves are losing, they themselves are not really happy. That's why they try to do all these tricks and this kind of domination. The other side of it is people who are humble, who are simple, who are honest, and who are really seeking the truth, are being oppressed by this gentleman. He oppresses them, tries to show off, tries to make slaves out of others. I have seen people have gone so far that there was a group of people who just would not move even an inch without the permission of their group. And they would go all out to be subservient to such a irrational personality. 
First of all, you know, this is the love of mother. Mother never dominates. She cannot dominate because she is nothing but love. As soon as she sees the problem, immediately she absorbs it. She has to make deliberations, just a drama sometimes to show that she is angry. But she cannot basically be angry with him. It's the love which all the time, all the time is flowing and that love envelops the mother as well as envelops you. That is how you people understand such. What does a human being need is nothing but love and compassion. Love and compassion of a very, very pure type. Look at Christ. He pitied the people who crucified him. He told his Father, God Almighty, that please forgive them because they do not know what they are doing. He could see that the blindness of these people are doing wrong things and God the Father will be very annoyed who is wrathful and may destroy them. So this is what uh, it was done with a very compassionate feeling. Without thinking about just automatically he felt that these people are doing all this to me and I don't know what will happen. So he prayed to God, to Father, please forgive. Please forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. They are blind. So please do not punish them. What compassion, what love. I mean, think of it. Do we do that in our life? If somebody harms us, troubles us, do we ask Father to forgive those who do not know what they are doing? That should be the level of service. And it will work out very well. If you ask for forgiveness, God will look after them. He transform them. He bring them to their senses. The message of Christ are full of love, compassion, pure compassion. How he tried to protect Mari Magdalene is an example of who was leading a sinful life. And for a saint it had nothing to do, he had nothing to do with it. But when he saw she being stoned by people, he stood against her, took a stone in his own hand and he says, all right, those who have not committed suicide, have not committed any uh, wrong deed or have not committed any sin, and take the stone and hit me. And nobody came forward because they had to face themselves. When we are dominating others, then a kind of a cruel joy is there. Some sort of a joy that I don't understand myself, but people have a show of that we have achieved this joy, we have achieved this uh, great power. It has happened uh, for centuries with all the great emperors and also despotic rulers. But with surgery it should be the other way now. They have to rule the world with peace and love. They don't have to show off by energy. This is how Sahaja Yoga will spread much, much faster. What does the world need? You just think of it. It needs only love and affection. Those people who are yet lost in the ignorance about life and are still busy troubling others, torturing others, going against the collectivity, will have to return to normalcy. It's very abnormal behavior sometimes. And you just don't understand why they behave like mad people. 
It is very difficult also to tell such a person that you are mad. And also it's difficult to be with such a person who is so mad, with some sort of a power. It goes on like that with so many Sajogis I've seen, who start thinking they have lots of powers, they can do whatever they like, they can uh, talk to anyone and uh, they can uh, confuse everyone. But in Sajoga you don't have to confuse, you have to clearly express your love. But that doesn't mean any kind of a particular gesture or a particular happening, but it is just a inner oneness with each other. It's, <coughs> sometimes I find such a place, so much understanding each other, so much loving each other, so beautifully enjoying the love of other people. When I see that, I feel very, very happy, absolutely overjoyed. That's what I wanted. These people should enjoy this thing. And you'll be amazed. The most enjoyable thing is the love that you give to others. You may not receive, but when you give love to others, then it's the most enjoyable thing. But the way you express yourself is also an art, I think, to understand how to please others, how to make them happy. <coughs> I told the story before also about a saint who lived in Gagan Bauda. Is a is a uh, what you can say is a hill or a mountain. He used to live there. And he couldn't walk, you see, because of vibrations he lost his uh, legs or something, power in him. And then he would go uh, all over the place on a tiger, because tiger loved him and he loved the tiger. So this gentleman was all the time telling people from Bombay, what are you doing here? Mother has come, go and touch her. I didn't know why he was so much concerned. So <coughs> I told Sajogis, I must go and meet him. So all these gurus, you see, they say that we don't leave our pillows. We have to be in our own pillow, means wherever they live, exist, they won't go out. I'm the other way round. I've never stationed in one place. So they asked, if I could go, I said, why not? So I went there. And the surgery said that, Mother, you never go anywhere. So why do you want to go here? I said, all right, see the vibration. Ah, it's tremendous vibration. So when I went out, this fellow was very angry with the rain, because he was supposed to control the rain. He was supposed to be controlling the rain. It's very surprising that when I went up, he could not control and I got completely drenched. So he was very angry. He, he was sitting on a stone, you know, and doing like this, dying that. I, I didn't say anything to him. I went inside and sat in the cave where he had made uh, some arrangement for me to be seated. Then he came, he touched my feet and he sat down. And I was amazed that he was still angry and he couldn't understand why the rain could not stop. So he asked me, why did you not allow me to stop the rain? Because after all, you have come in to see me all the way and uh, the rain should have behaved. And I also could not somehow or other control the rain. So what was the thing, what was the lesson? I just smiled 
I said, see, you are an ascetic, you are a sannyasi, and I am your mother. I cannot take a sari from you, because after all you are a sannyasi, and uh, you are not supposed to take any uh, anything from a sannyasi. Even the mother cannot take anything from him. But you have bought a nice sari for me. So I had to get drenched so that I could take a sari from him. You see, the sweetness of my telling him just made him melt down. Started crying. He said, we need a mother for this one. There should be the mother. We cannot serve because whatever it is, we get angry or we want to disappear. We don't want to be with these horrible people who are so sinful to help them. But this is the problem with the world today and that's why you find very few spiritual people in the whole world because they are the ones who are being very much tortured, troubled, insulted, all kinds of things. So they are struggling, struggling, so they want to die very fast. Ganeshwara, such a great personality, such a great uh, writer, poet, I mean, he was everything, so beautifully he has written. But at the age of twenty-three, he took his samadhi, means he went into a cave and closed the cave and died. Must have been tired and fed up with the surroundings of ignorant people, and that's why he did. So you can imagine a per person like Ganeshwara, who was the incarnation of Kartike, had to recede into the world of the dead because he couldn't bear it anymore the way they were torturing them. They tortured him so much, saying that he is the son of a sannyasi and uh, uh, he has, I mean, it's like this son of a sannyasi means seek. He is no good. He is absolutely like an illegitimate child and he is ill-treated to such an extent. He didn't even have shoes to wear in that heat of India, he used to walk bare feet. And his sister, brother, who were great scholars, who were great saints, great incarnations, all of them. As a result, he wanted just to disappear and he made a beautiful way of doing it that he told them that I have to go and he took leave from them and went inside his cave and got his samadhi. Even Christ was very young when he was crucified. He was thirty-three years of age. It was all planned by the Divine that He was to be crucified, to make way for our Sahaja Yoga, to open the Agya, to sacrifice His life.
for this beautiful meditation thank you for sending your son sacrifice and resurrect for us so that we can get self realization 
you again and again. Yes, Shimataji. Let's bow down to Shimataji and take Bandhan. 